How did Jesus' sacrifice for you? How did it move you? I went from feeling like I was unworthy and beyond saving to knowing that I was fully loved and that I didn't need to go looking for feelings of love or validation anywhere else because I had that completely and unfailingly in Jesus. It just sort of takes over, like you, yeah, you feel that you're a new person from one day to the next. We try to get people's approval, but because of this, this, that, like good attitude or good work stuff. <laughs> but I think being accepted by God is so amazing because you're like, wow, you know the worst of me, you know all my sins, all my worst time and all the things I mess up, but you choose to accept me and love me and welcome me to you. To your house that's just you know nothing you can find in this world yeah exactly and it's so tempting to want to please man as well right it's so tempting to want to please your colleagues or your friends mm -hmm. or your family but in the end that's it's going to be more or less impossible it's hard they're mm -hmm. never going to be fully pleased and they're always going to let you down as well mm -hmm. at some point and so knowing that you have a savior who knows you fully and mm. loves you fully and will never let you down. Mm. It's such a contrast and it's so worth living for. Mm. Yeah. What struggles have you encountered in following Jesus? Yeah, I, mean, I have this amazing, <laughs> interesting story. <laughs> so I was actually live with a Max boyfriend and, and I wasn't a Christian. And I basically thought, it's just everybody do this. I actually, I didn't choose to do that because I wanted. I was a pretty conservative, but I thought I must do this to follow the world, like the society. Otherwise, people won't accept me. Relationship won't work anyway. Um, and then, but at the same time, I started to go to church and I started to, you know, seeing all the new perspective of my life and I was just really in struggle and was like oh what should I do now but I think I did have struggle like a lot because you need to choose you can't just stay in between but I think the more I listen to God's word the more I feel his love it just makes sense I need to like leave that so I finally made my uh, made my decision I was like no I don't want to do that I want to do God's way so I did and <laughs> I it was hard at the time but is the best decision I made. And I think that also changed me, shaped me. After that, I want to live a life that's worthy of His name, like that's pleasing Him. I don't want to just do it because the word said you need to do it or because everybody's doing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thanks for sharing that. No worries. I was reflecting on how in the Gospel of Matthew, um, it's recorded that Jesus said to His disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So following Jesus, um, it's not just all fun Bubble and me. rainbows <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's a real sacrifice, right? Like Jesus says, you have to deny yourself. Um, I don't like denying myself. I love gratifying my desires. Um, but then he goes on to say that for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Mm. That's so amazing. So mm. there you find true life. What we think leads to life mm. is actually leading to death, but then what the world says mm. is going to kill you is actually what leads to life. I think that's so cool. And that's um, one of the key verses that sticks with me when I'm struggling, um, when I know that I want to do something, but I know that, oh, probably not quite God's will for me. And it's that way for a reason. Um, like I said before, he's not just trying to be a strict father, right? He created us and he created us this way and he's told us how to live. And so it makes sense that that way is the best way for us.